This is Magic Carpet Ride by Steppenwolf. I'm going to start with the intro, which is mostly uh, just some noise. Um, before I start, I'm going to let you know I've got some effects on this to make it sound like the recording. Uh, some compression, delay, flange, and also some uh, distortion. So um, let's go ahead and I'll play it along with the music for you, and then I'll show you the notes to it. It's pretty easy. So oh, there it is. Uh, basically it's got a little bit of feedback in the beginning and um, from there the first note you can really hear that uh, is prevalent in the mix is this note here. Which is the uh, 14th fret. I'm using my third finger on the second string and I bend it about a half step. That would be so that it sounds like the 15th fret normal. And um, we're going to bend it there and then release it several times, like so. From there, the next note is this one, which is the uh, 13th fret on the third string, third finger again, so I can get a little strength with the bend. And then we have um, the part where you can hear the flange and delay really well. And what I'm doing here is I'm using the open uh, sixth string, the E string, and instead of just plucking it with a down pick like that, I'm using the edge of the pick here, this part, to scratch the string as I pluck it, and that gives it that uh, scratchiness sound that adds to the flange of it. So there's how you play the intro. Um, from there it goes into the verse, the that part of the song which we're going to learn next. This is the verse to uh, Magic Carpet Ride by Steppenwolf. Um, basically this whole thing starts with a D chord on the fifth fret. I'll zoom in a little bit here so you can get a better look at my fingers. And um, the way we're going to construct this one is we're going to use our first finger on the fifth fret of the fifth string and our third finger on the seventh fret of the fourth, third, and second strings. It's barring all three of them. You see how I kind of hyperextend it like that to make it work. And um, basically we're going to strum just those four strings. Next chord, the C, is the same configuration that we used right here with D, only we move it down to the third fret. So we have... From there we're going to go to a G chord. And the way we form this one is we use our first finger across all of the strings on the first third fret, second finger on the fourth fret of the third string, third finger on fifth fret of the fifth string, and pinky on the fifth fret of the fourth string should sound like that. So those are going to be our chords. And that's going to be our pattern. So here's what our strum pattern is going to look like now. Um, for the first part we're going to go down, down, then a muted down as we move to an up strum on the third fret chord, the C chord, and then two downs here. And as we move back to the D chord, we're going to do a quick mute down up. And by the way, the way I'm producing these mutes is I take my um, fingers off the strings just enough so that they um, won't be able to fret the notes. Like so. See how I just lift them slightly? So they're still in contact with the strings, but not enough to produce a sound. And when you move, See how I, when I move I don't lose contact with the strings to achieve that mute. And then the second time through we're going to go two, down up, down up on the C chord, then a down up mute twice, and then two G chords. So slowly it's going like to look like this, D, C, G, G, mute, mute, down, 
down, up, down, down. And there it is nice and slow and also sped up a little bit. So um, that's the way you want to approach the verse. Let's move along to the chorus. All right, this is the chorus to... Um, all right, so there we go. Uh, the chords for this. Basically, we're going to use the um, third fret chord, the G chord, shape that we learned earlier in the verse of the song. That's our first chord. From there, we're going to move that chord up to the sixth fret which would make it a B-flat chord, and then to the eighth. So we have... Close your eyes, girl, close your eyes, girl, let the sun take you away. And that part is going to go, we're going to use our uh, D shape that we learned earlier up here on the tenth fret. And what we're doing here is we're going to put a couple mutes in it, like... And the way I'm achieving those mutes is I'm just lifting my fingers slightly so they're still in contact with the strings and then still picking consistently here with my right hand. And I'm moving here to the 8th fret. And that happens four times. So there we go, there's our chorus. Uh, let's move along to the next part of the song. All right, this is the uh, kind of effect guitar that happens underneath the rhythm during the keyboard solo. Um, it kind of has its own little solo, very much improvised um, during the song. What I'm gonna do is show you the notes that you can choose uh, for your improvisation and then I'll play along with it. And what we want to keep in mind here is they're just kind of winging it. This guy's doing it off the top of his head. I doubt that he ever plays it the same way twice. So um, when I play along with it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be a split second behind it because I'm going to hear what note he's doing and I'm going to jump on that note right away. So as you watch my fingers, you'll be able to see what he plays. But um, since I don't have it memorized, I'm just going to be kind of playing this game of cat and mouse with the notes where as soon as I hear them, I'm going to play that note. You probably won't even hear the difference if you're a beginner. You'll think I'm right on top of it. But if you're a little bit advanced, you might notice that I'm, you know, a millisecond behind what the recording is. Um, anyway, so here's those notes. It kind of starts with this note here the uh, 12th fret 6th string note, and by the way I have plenty of flange, um, some distortion, delay, and also compression on this for the effects. Um, then he also uses in the song the 12th fret 5th string, 14th 5th string, 12th 4th string, 14th 4th string, and 12th 3rd string. So that's going to be our scope. Of notes. He primarily moves um, along the 14th here quite a bit to the 12th with an occasional 11th during the song. So, and then of course there's a couple notes that are going to be up top here that are bent, um, one up here too. And you'll hear those as the song progresses and you'll see me play along with them. Um, but like I said, this is mostly improvised, so when you go to learn this song, don't dwell on it. Don't uh, sit there until you have every single nuance um, learned, unless you really, really love this song, because it's not going to help you play anything else any better. All it's going to help you with is pulling off the nuances of, the, of this song. That's why I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time doing it note for note like I would with a lot of solos in my other videos. Um, so wasn't it?
So um, basically, you know, use that series of notes that I showed you, those notes to pick from, and follow along the best you can uh, with the recording. If you want to be a real stickler about it, you can go over a note for a note, maybe uh, slow down the recording and try to pick them out one by one, knowing that uh, they all are derived from that series of notes that I showed you, or you can just kind of make up your own as you go along. Either way, uh, whatever suits you, have fun with it. Let's move along now and do the next part of the video. Okay, this is the rhythm that happens under the keyboard solo and also under the effects kind of guitar that happens um, after the second chorus of the song. Uh, what I'm going to do is show you the chords first here and then I'll play it along with it. It's pretty lengthy, um, but it's the same two chords over and over, so we're just going to dwell on these two chords as we uh, play it along with the tune. Um, the first one is going to be our D shape, or like this, except here we're going to play it on the 7th fret, which actually makes it an E chord, the name of that would be E, and then back down to 5th fret, so we're going to have, those are the chords without the mutes, that's going to be our pattern. Now there's a lot of mutes in there. What I'm doing here, um, if you see my right hand over here, I'm like. I'm primarily doing a rhythm that looks like this. Down, mute, up, mute, up, down, up, down, 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 mute, mute. Rather than try and work all that out and say to yourself, well, I got to do a down and an up mute and a down and up mute, a couple more mutes, this and that, uh, the best way to approach learning this is get used to bouncing your fingers off the strings without any mutes with this pattern and then throw in the mutes later. Now, I should point out that that isn't the only strum he does. He's, go, he's all over the place with the rhythm here uh, during the solo. He's kind of improvising his rhythm, doing um, all sorts of different strums, like... I played it differently three times in a row there for you. Um, you probably didn't catch all that because I played it rather quickly. But the whole point is you don't have to be locked into just one pattern. As long as it sounds kind of funky and moves along well with the song, then you're okay. You're probably doing something right. Um, so there's the rhythm under the uh, solo of the song. Let's move along to the next part of the song. The idea, that's not the whole thing, but it goes on for a while. Um, let's move along now and do the kind of effectual guitar that happens underneath that rhythm.